Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church, our Friday evening service, uh, January 19th, 2024. It's cold in Chicago. I don't know, it was 10, 11, 12 degrees and going down to 2 degrees tonight. Uh, you know, but it's warm in here. We're preaching God's word and we're singing hymns to God, giving him glory and praising him. Amen. Amen. Uh, pray for uh, Mr. Tom Sloan. Uh, he's on... Uh, life support and I'm going to take him and put him in the hospice tomorrow. Pray that uh, uh, if, that he knows the Lord Jesus Christ, that he could be eternity with him forever and that he would comfort, that the Lord would comfort him now in this time. Uh, pray for him and uh, uh, baby Abraham it'll be his birthday coming up one year old and uh, he's been in the ICU for almost one year. Pray that God would bless that child and use that child for his glory to be a witness to the whole world. Amen. All right, we're going to sing page 74, Saved by the Blood, the Blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Glory, I'm saved, glory, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Glory, I'm saved, glory, I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The angels rejoicing because it is done. A child of the Father, join heir with a son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned. My guilt is all gone. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The Father, he spake, and his will it was done. Great price of my pardon, his own precious son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned. My guilt is all gone. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. All hail to the Father, all hail to the Son, all hail to the Spirit, the great three in one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Glory, I'm saved, glory, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Glory, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. You know what? We're saved by the blood of Jesus, amen, and he can save anybody. He paid the price. The Father made everyone. Jesus Christ died for everyone. He shed all his blood out. When he said it's finished, he brought that blood to heaven and put it on the mercy seat to save every single person in the world who comes. So people need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and repent and ask for forgiveness of their sins and they'll save their soul. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to teach tonight what God has me to teach. It's uh, Psalm 49. Psalm 49. And it's verses 1 through 20. I'm just going to recap the first eight verses we started and then we're going to pick up. And I titled this, Open Your Ears, Hear God. We need to open our ears. You know, a lot of times, you know, God's ears are always open. He hears sinners and he hears the righteous, but he doesn't answer to sinners. He helps the righteous. And you know what? Our ears are open, but we God may be speaking to us through his word. We don't always listen. We got to pay attention. We have to 
hear what God wants to hear. We hear we we hear through His Holy Word. This this book is alive. God's Word. He talks to us daily as we study our Bible and we pray to God, and God hears us. You know, and you know God. You know, things happen in the life. You know, people are sick. We're just done having our prayers time, and we are praying for people. It's God's. You know, God's. Um, in God's time. It's not in our time. We want to see people we know, our loved ones, our friends, you know, get healed right away, but it's it's up to God to heal, and God uses things. Like the blind man, the blind man, uh, his disciples asked Jesus, why is this man born blind? Did he sin or did his parents? So they thought it was sin. No, it was for the glory of God. This baby Abraham, you know what? He's been in ICU since he was born, but it's for the glory of God. So we have to keep praying for him and let God have the God will have the glory in this situation. Amen. Amen. Who knows? Maybe somebody needs to be saved and they see this situation and you know what? It softens their heart, their mind. They might have been never thinking of God and it'll open their mind, heart, and soul and they'll ask God to forgive them and they'll get saved and God will get the glory out of the situation. You know, a lot of things we're not going to know till we get to heaven, how every, all these things, you know, sometimes we may, th we may think it's bad, but God used it for good. Amen. Amen. We don't know. So we got to give God the glory. Um, Psalm 49, 1 through 20. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to speak your words and not mine, Lord. I pray for this time now to open your holy word and hear your words, Lord, and open our ears and hear what you got to tell us, Lord. And I pray that uh, you would just guide us and lead us where you want us to go and that we would hear you and follow you and do what you say, Lord. I pray for people. I pray for all these sick people that were on the prayer request list and for pastors and uh all the pastors we know, and uh, uh, I just pray for uh, Steve Sajak in Texas, and uh, Pastor Thomas, Mrs. Thomas, and uh, uh, Pastor Gilbert Rogers Baptist Church, all the different churches of people we know here, uh, Pastor Stiller in, uh, up in Wisconsin, Pastor uh, French, Pastor uh, Zorick in Mazan Baptist Church there, uh, uh, Pastor... Uh, French and uh, Pastor uh, Clark, Pastor Clark at Bridgeview Church there. Lord, I pray for all these pastors that, Lord, that you would uh, lift them up, lift up their churches, lift us up here that we'd lift you up, Lord. I pray that you would get all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, Psalm 49. It says, Hear this, all ye people, give ear, ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my heel shall compass me about, that they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever, that he should st that he should still live forever and not see corruption. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and a brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beast that perish. This is their way. If their this is their way is their folly. Yet their prosperity approve their saying. Selah. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. And their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for He shall receive me. Selah. Be thou not afraid. When one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. But while he lived, he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generations of his father. They shall never see light. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. You know, man that don't honor God and don't understand God, you know what, they've heard and they don't come, you know what, they're like the beasts that perish. They're going to perish for eternity and be separated from God. They need to hear and trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's start in verse 1. We're going to go here. Hear this, all ye people. So God wants us to hear. He wants to open our ears. 
here, study his Bible. He wants us to hear what he's got to tell us. You know, a lot of people, they study, but they don't hear. They, you know, put things in the world first. We got to put God first. We got to hear what he is telling us. He says, give ear. Open them ears. You got two ears, one mouth. Shut the mouth, open the ears. Amen. Amen. This is all the inhabitants of the world. So that's the inhabitants. It's every single person in the world. Again, God, God made every single person in the world. And Jesus died for every single person. So every single person needs the Lord Jesus Christ. It says both low and high, rich and poor. You know, low and high. You know, you got a person homeless, you know, on the street. And you got the guy who owns the street. You know, rich and poor. It's the same. There's no, it's a level pl playing field at the foot of the cross. It doesn't matter. You can be rich or poor and you has got to come. You got to repent of your sins. Turn to Christ. Ask him to forgive you and he'll save your soul. It says, my mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. So you know what? When you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives you that wisdom to speak, to speak his word. His word is with My word isn't wisdom. I'm reading God's word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have to speak his wisdom. It's from his holy word. This book's alive. It's quick and it's alive. It, it, gets, it gets other people alive. It touches them. It cuts through them. You know, they could be in all kinds of sin, drugs, alcohol, whatever they're in, and it touches their lives. They can be, you know, it, it'll cut through. It'll get their attention. But we have to give them the word. We have to, they have to hear it. They have to hear it. So we have to speak it or we have to give them a gospel track and tell them. It says, uh, you know, my meditation and my heart understanding. We have to meditate on God's word daily. What do you want? We can look at one verse and study it, study it, meditate. What do you want me to do, God? What do you want me to do? And God will speak to you. And then you, you, you'll do it. Amen? Amen. And it says, uh, you know, let's look at Joshua. Let's look at Joshua 1, 8, 9. Joshua 1, 8, 9. We've got to meditate on God's word. You know, a lot of people, they read God's word, but they don't meditate it. They don't take it to heart. They don't take it, study it, you know, and hear. You got to hear. You know, God will give you, a, you'll open your Bible. You never know. You open your Bible, God open that Bible to where he wants you to open it, yeah. and you'll study it because he's trying to tell you something, something, maybe an issue in your life, maybe an issue in somebody else's life, but God wants you to hear and understand. Joshua 1, 8, 9 says, It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So God came to Joshua and he told him, you know, study, study the book. Study the word. Study his word. Meditate on it. Put it in your heart. Put it in your mind. Put it in your soul. That you can give it to some, teach somebody else it. It says, Meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So everything in here is the word of God is used you can use it in your life for the, for your for any purpose in your life you use God's word for then shalt thou for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous if you study God's word you meditate on it you use God's word and you do what God tells you to do and you give ear and hear and do God will bless you God will keep you you know what you know people think prosperous oh making money I'm rich I own a big house I got to no God's blessing you. God, you know what? When you're reaching people for Jesus Christ and you're witnessing to them and they get saved, you know, that's prosperous. Yeah. That's that's true prosperity. Winning people to the Lord. Not having things, you know. We need to get rid of our things, you know. We always are, oh, we got to save for this. No, we don't. God, God provides what we need. And it says, and then shalt thou have good success. You know, you're going to have good success when you dwell, when you study God's words daily and you, you you meditate on it, take it into your heart, mind, and soul, and use it for people. You're gonna you're gonna be prosperous and you're gonna be you have good success. You're gonna win people, you're gonna win people. You know what? You're gonna tell people about Jesus, you're gonna cut through that stony heart of theirs, through that mind that's you know, whatever whatever sin or lust they're in, you can call you can reach them, and then you can win you can win them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at Verse 4, I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. So, you know, we've we got sins in us. We got we, we, we have lusts. You know, we got to get rid of those lusts. We got to live in the Spirit. We got to live in the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit. We can't live in the lusts of the flesh for the world. You know, we have to get rid of those. We got to give them to the harp, to the, give them to God. You know, God, God, will, God the Holy Spirit will help us over, get, overcome. 
We got to be overcomers. We got to stay in God's word. You know, we can't let this world, you know what? We have things and everything we have should be used for God. Amen. 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 And it says here, verse 5, wherefore, actually, let's look at Luke 21, 13 through 15. Luke 21, 13 through 15. Luke 21, 13 through 15. And it says in Luke 21, 13, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. So you know what? They're going to look to you. They're going to turn to you for a testimony. What's your testimony going to be? Yeah. You know, I own this. I got a lot of money at this. Or your testimony say, hey, I trusted Jesus Christ. You know what? He can save you too. And then start reading Bible to them. Study, do Bible studies. Give them God's word that they can take it into their heart. And it says here, And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. You know what? God will give you the words. You know, God's given me words that, man, sometimes I'm scared though. Like, I don't know what to say. But you know what? God will give you the proper thing to say. You got to let the Holy Spirit speak. Let God speak through you. You give ear, and then you'll speak. God will give you the words to be a testimony. To settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what you answer. So you don't even have to think. God will give you the words, you know. Right. It says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries should not be able to gainsay nor resist. So, mm -hmm. you know what? They're not going to be able to speak against you, you know, contradict or oppose you or hinder you. Because, you know what? you got the words of God coming out of your mouth. They can't hinder that. You know what? You know, if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, we have to, we got to, we got to have true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and He's able to. You know, He's He's the God who created the heaven and the earth, and He can. There's not, there, there's no problem too big that God can't help or help anybody, and we need to be the witnesses and shine His light to others. Amen. Amen. And then it says. Uh, verse number six. Oh, no. First, verse number five. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil? You know, there's evil right now. We're in days of evil. There's a lot of evil going on in this world when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about. You know what? Some people, <coughs> if you live in the flesh, you know what? What you reap is what you sow. So if you got things you're not doing right, not following, giving ear to God and doing things his way, you know, a lot of people want to do things their way. They think they're doing it God's way, but they're not. They got to hear. They got to listen. Open your ears and hear what God's got to say. And they have to do things God's way because you know what? The way they do it may be causing iniquity and then it's going to come back to them. Yeah. It's going to, you know, it's going to come on you, you know. And it's, you know, whose fault is it? It's your own fault. You know, you have to go back to God. And if you do things your way and not God's way, you got to ask God to forgive you and do it his way. Back up. You take a test and you fail it. You don't, you don't pass the test. You got to take the test again. So God tests us daily and in our lives that we should do things his way, study his word, and do what he wants us to do, do what God wants us to do. And it says, they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in a multitude of riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give the God a ransom for him. You know, people trust in their wealth. You know what? I don't care if you got a trillion dollars. It doesn't matter. You're going to die and go to hell unless you trust Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Right. You know, people boast in themselves. I'm somebody, you know, it says we shouldn't uh, eat their dainties and all their stuff. People invite you, ungodly people. You know what? If you do go to uh, a dinner with some ungodly people invite you, go there with the intent with some gospel tracts in your pocket and, you know, be a witness for Jesus Christ if you're there. Be there to share the gospel with them. Amen? Amen. You know, because they don't trust in God. They trust in their money. They think their wealth is going to save them, you know. And it says the multitude of the riches. So they got a lot of money. They got a lot of things. They own lands, houses, but it's not going to get them to heaven. It says none of them can by, can by any means redeem his brother. So you know what? They can't, they cannot save anybody. Their money can't save anybody. Only Jesus Christ can redeem you truly and, and save you, you know. 
nor give God a ransom for them. You can't give a ransom. You know what? We pray for family members and people we love. And you know what? People, even people I had a dislike, I pray for them. You know what? I want God to save them. So, you know, we can't give a ransom, but we can give prayer to God. And we pray to God to save people's souls. And he hears. And you know what? If they soften their hearts and turn to him and repent of their sins and ask him to forgive their sins, he is just and able to forgive their sins. Amen. You know, money can't save nobody. Only Jesus can. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is going to come to judge. Let's look at Proverbs 11.4. Proverbs 11.4. Proverbs 11.4 says, Riches profiteth not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. So you know what? Your riches... Not going to profit in nothing. God doesn't care how much you got. Again, like it said in uh, <clears throat> in 49 verse uh, 2, both low and high, rich and poor together. So, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it, it, at the foot of the cross where Jesus died, Jesus died for every single person. It doesn't matter what you have. <clears throat> Proverbs 11, 4. Riches profit nothing in the day of wrath. So you know what? When the wrath of God comes and you don't trust him, it's not going to profit. It can't save you. It can't protect you. It cannot do none. But righteousness delivereth from death. You know what? My righteousness is like a filthy rag. But Jesus, when he paid with his blood on the cross, his righteousness delivers us from the power of death. Amen? It says the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. So you know what? But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. So the wicked are going to fall. You know, unless they turn from their turn from their sin and turn to Christ and ask Him to forgive their sins. Let's look at also Psalm one nineteen fourteen one nineteen fourteen. Psalm one nineteen fourteen. You know, riches can't save you. Only Jesus Christ can. We have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross of Calvary. He shed His blood. And paid, he said, it's finished. He paid for the sin of the whole world. Mm -hmm. And God the Father on the third day raised him from the dead. And he's sitting on the right hand of God the Father till the Lord t God tells him to come back and judge this world. Psalm 1, 19, verse 14 says, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as all as in all the riches. In all, as in all riches. You know what? The testimonies of God... You know what? You know somebody who's been in sin their whole life, and you've been witnessing, witnessing them, and finally they said, Lord, forgive me. God saves them. That's riches. I mean, that's, you know what? How many, you know, when you go to heaven, doesn't matter what you had in this life. Only thing that matters is what you did for God, handing out tracts. I mean, so many times <clears throat> people say, I'm saying, how did you get, how did you hear about the church or that? And they said, oh, I get some lady gave me this gospel track in Burger King. Praise God, you know. So that's riches. That's riches, you know. Um, or we 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 found a track laying on the ground. I was you know feeling in the dumps. I I was like you know sad, and you know what? I wanted to come to church. I want to hear what God's got to say. So you know what? God uses things for His glory. You know, you go to God, you go to parades, and people throw the tracks down. You never know. Later that day, somebody be. You know, they're thinking about the devils in their head. Hey, kill yourself. They'll pick up that track and, wow, let me go to the service. It's tonight, Friday night, or Sunday. And they'll come, and God will speak to their heart. He'll have his ears open, and you know what? He'll save his soul. Amen. Yeah, amen. You know, we have, to, we have to use what God gives us. And it says, uh, verse number 8 in Psalm 49, it says, For the redemption of her soul is precious and ceases forever. You know how much is how much is a soul? How much is your soul worth? You know, million dollars, billion dollars. Does it's priceless? Yeah. That's true, priceless. Somebody's soul is priceless, and we need to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ, how He died on the cross and shed His blood for their sin, and it ceases forever. You know what? Once you're dead, it's over. But it ceases forever. You're either going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven for eternity, or you're going to be separated from the Lord Jesus Christ in hell and in the lake of fire for eternity. So you have to make a decision. Your soul is precious. You know, people think about, oh, health. You know, it's a new year. I'm going to start working out. I'm, I'm going to, you know, leave my junk food, and I'm going to start going exercising. You know, thinking about the body, the Bible says, 
bodily exercise of profiteth little. So it's good. I mean, God gave you your body, and if your Holy Spirit's in your body, you don't want to be, you know, out of shape where you can't go outside. You know, some people are, unfortunately, they're sick from their sin, from like overindulging in foods and drinking pop, sugar, and, you know, hurt their body. They can't even go out and witness to people. They can't even come to church because they're sick. You know, broadly exercise, so work out a little bit. You know, I go to the gym, I go to a boxing gym, and I'm jabbing for Jesus. I'll be working out, and I'll say, hey, let me give you a gospel track. Let me tell you about Jesus. So we have to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to take care of our body so it can be used for God. Amen. And it says here, uh, you know, it's going to cease forever. Your soul, you know, heaven or hell, you know, it's it's one or the other. There's no in-between. There is no purgatory. I don't know where that came. It says that you should live forever and not see corruption. So let's look at, let's look at Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. You know, this week's been, man, these last three days, wow, it was, I think, zero, two below, and today it went up to ten. I mean, uh, from Sunday, from Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, yeah, this whole week's been super cold, and you know what? Able to get out a few tracks, witness a little, we have to do what we can. You know, we got to give ear, we got to listen you know, certain people, you may run into somebody you'll never see again. And, you know, give them a gospel track. Tell them about the Lord, how he loves them. Look at Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So your payment, the redemption of your soul, it says is precious. You know what? Your soul's precious. The wages of sin. So what you get paid, like you go to work, you get paid for doing sin. You're going to have a you're going to have a bill. And you got to pay that bill. And you know what? You can't pay that bill. Jesus Christ paid that bill on the cross of Calvary and he shed his blood for the payment for that. So you have to come to him and ask him to forgive your sin. And then he'll forgive your sin if you come with a repentant heart. And then you put your faith in what he did on the cross and he saves your soul. You know, roll, uh, you know but the gift, the gift, it's a gift. God, it's the most best, best gift in the world. You know what, people were looking for gifts a few weeks back at Christmas, but you know what, the best gift you can ever get is salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, let's look, it's in verse number 10. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool, the brutish person, perish and leave their wealth to others. You know what, wise people die. You know, the smartest people in the world, Albert Einstein, uh, you know, people who've invented things, you know, wise people own a uh, big company. They're wise and they're, you know what, they're wise in the worldly. They're not wise in Christ. You know, it says, likewise, the fool. So it comes, says, so they're comparing a wise person with a fool and a brutish person. A brutish person is someone, you know, who's mean and, uh, <coughs> what, uh, yeah, verse ten of forty nine says, "For he seeth the wise men die." So wise are gonna wise people gonna die. Likewise, the fool and the brutish person, you know, that's like a beast like, stupid, irrational, brutal. They're cruel, they're crude, they're uncivilized. So and leave their wealth to others. So all these people die and leave their wealth to others. You know what? A lot of people, you know, saving and saving and saving, saving for what? Yeah. You know what? This life passes by and then it's eternity. So you know what? We need to, you know, help the church, help uh, your local New Testament Baptist church. If you're a member there, help the church, help buy gospel tracts, help buy Bibles, contribute so you can evangelize to people, so you can get out when there's parades. And, uh, you know, we need, you know what? The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. We pray that God will send laborers into the field to help us tell, tell them about him. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's getting to that point where people don't want to hear it says, in the end, they'll believe a lie before they'll believe the truth, you know. I'd like to see this church filled with people, but that's up to God, amen. It's up to people if they want to come. The people, God gives them free will. They have to, they have to truly 
give their ear and hear what God wants and trust him as Lord and Savior and then serve him. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, you know, all these different people are going to die. And you know what? It doesn't. I'm sorry. Let's look at 3 John 1, 2. John, 3 John 1, 2. John 1 2. Is that right? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So, you know, God, God wants us to prosper in our health. So, I, while, you know, it's our soul's saved. If you're saved and you're going to heaven one day, God wants us to be prosperous, mainly with our health, so we can get out there and tell others, you know. Live your life according to the way God wants you to live, and you can be used for, you know, his will. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So, you know, flesh and blood can't go into heaven. Only, only when you're the blood of Jesus is on you. But I behold, I will show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So God's going to take our corruptible body and give us an incorruptible body. It's just like his. It's going to have no sin at all. Then it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So that's going to be quick. You know, when the Lord comes back, when that trumpet sounds, we're going to be in a, mo a twinkling in the eye. I don't know how fast it is, but it's fast. For this corruptible, so we're corrupt. I mean, we're still corrupt. You know, you trusted Jesus Christ. You know, you got the Holy Spirit. Your flesh is still corruptible. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. You know, when Christ comes, you are going to be put on, in, you're going to be, your corruption is going to be made in, incorruptible, and your mortal body is going to be immortality. You're not going to be human no more. You're not going to be flesh and blood. You're going to be in spirit. You're going to go with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to give you a body, but it's going to be an incorruptible body. Mm -hmm. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, so when the Lord comes, your corruptible body, you're going to put on Incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality. So you won't be mortal anymore. You're going to be immortal. It's forever. It's eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then shall be brought to pass to say that is saying that is written, Oh, death, death is swallowed up in victory. You know what? Christ got the victory. He got the victory in Jesus. He beat death. He beat hell. He beat devil, the devil. He beat the grave. He's God. It says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave. Where's thy victory? We get the victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. But thanks to be, be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So he gives us the victory. We're going to be forever with him. And you know what? We're going to see no corruption. There is going to be no corruption. Let's look at Jonah 2.6. says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O my Lord. You know what? Jonah went to the bottom of the, the whale motel. He went to the bottom three days, three nights, and he came out and, 
you know what? God brought him out. He he repented of his sins and you know he trusted God. When he got out, he went to he got out of there. It said it was a three day tra a track to dinner ball. He did it in one day. He was scared. He wanted. He heard what God did. He knew what God's power is, and he did it really quick. And he went there and told them to repent. He didn't want to tell those people to repent. He hated the people there. But you know what? God gave him here, and he did it. What he was supposed to do. Yeah. You know, God gets the glory in things. You know what? We may not think, wow, why are we doing this? Why are we inviting this person? This person's disrupting the church service or this. But, you know, you never know. God may change that person. That person could be one of a, a, a major player in winning other people to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, everybody dies because of sin. You know, if you don't think sin... Uh, going to die a sin, prove me wrong and don't die. Every single person's going to die. And you know, we're, you know, the wise people die, the fool dies, the brutish person die. And you know what? They leave their wealth to others. So, you know, the things that God gave them in their life, they could have used it for the glory of God. And you know what? Somebody else is going to get it. And you probably, the person that gets it is not going to be a person that you want. So, yeah. you know what? If you don't got a will, Give your things to godly people. You know, we don't. I don't have kids, but you know what? I think I'm gonna will out my stuff to some godly people, family that they get it, and you know what? They can continue serving the Lord till He comes, if He doesn't come in my lifetime. Amen. Amen. And then it says in verse, you know, you save things, you keep things for what? You know, when when you die, it goes to someone else anyway. But maybe the you know the people that you do give it to will be used to be, give to the glory of God. You know, we have to, you know, God said the rich, the fool, the brutish. So all these are totally con different people. And you know what? It all, they're all, they're, you know, they're going to lose everything. You know, the lawyers are going to take the money. Yeah. The accountants are going to take your money. And you know what? They're probably not going to use it for the glory of God. <laughs> you know, God's fair. You reap what you sow. Let's look at Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know what? We're not. If we don't faint, we just got to stay busy. Stay busy for God telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ, handing out tracts. In due season, we're going to reap. You know, and there's a lot of people that passed away. And they, you know what? They they, they, they sowed for the Lord. They were out in the field. They planted. They gave out his tract, gave out his word. And you know what? And served them. And they're dead now. They're not, you know, they're in heaven. But, you know, what, what, what they sowed out, people got saved. And one day they're going to be with them, amen, mm -hmm. when they die. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so... Never give up. Keep fighting for the Lord. It says, then it says in verse 11, it says, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, the people who got money and things, their house, you know, they name it after them, uh, themselves, their name, and you know what? Their name's not going to get the glory. Only thing you're going to get the glory if you give it to God and you continue having other people serving God and you know even it may not even be your family you might give stuff some people who trusted the Lord you know what doesn't matter they are your family when you trust the Lord I'll tell you what in your lifetime if you have you get past 50 years old if you truly truly have one or two friends in this life you know what I have a few friends they're not saved but I'm trying to tell them I tell them, keep telling them about Jesus Christ and that they'll in the world they're good good people by the world standards, are good people. But you know what? You'll meet Christian people who are saved. You don't even know them. They'll be eating dinner, and somebody will go, "Oh, how long you know them? Thirty years? No, I just met them today." Yeah. You know what? You're you're the same. You got you got the Holy Spirit living in you, and you know what? You want to you 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 you. It's just your you your it's spirit. Sick. Your spirit's in yeah. sync. You know. Yeah. It says. You know what? The, the dwelling places, their inward thought, in verse 11 of Psalm 49, that their houses shall continue forever. And their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. So, uh, you know, they name it after things, like you know. Pritzker. Yeah, different people. And you know what? It's not going to last forever. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, people money. have, uh, you know, we used to have Mayor Daly here. It was a big name. I bet if you mentioned Mayor Daly today, man, 90% of these people under 40 wouldn't even know who you're talking about. You know, but, you know, 30 years ago, every single person knew Mayor Daly was. But, you know what, the name doesn't last. But if you serve God and do it, you're, God will... God will make your name last. He'll bring you up in something, and they'll hear your name because you served him. Amen? Amen? You know, our name's not the legacy. That's what people want, a legacy. You know what? The only legacy that's worth doing and keeping is for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, we, we trust in Jesus. We're going to live forever. And you know what? Our name's going to be written down in that book of life, and we're going to be with the Lord forever. Ooh. Let's look at Proverbs fourteen twelve. You know, they think they think that, you know, because they got much money or they donated to this and, you know, they, they think they did it. You know, God blessed them and God was trying to get their attention that, you know, they can they can serve him and glorify him. But money says money is the root of all evil Enough. and many rich people have pierced their souls with arrows. You know, Proverbs fourteen twelve. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end there but the end thereof are the ways of death. <coughs> you know what? There's a way that seems right unto man. People think because they got money in that that their name's gonna live on. No. The end thereof is the ways of death. And death, you know what? Sin bringeth forth death. And if you don't trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, death bringeth forth hell, and in hell bring forth the second judgment the lake of fire for eternity, which I wish upon nobody. And we, we have to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to get busy. The time is short. You know, the devil knows it. The devil doesn't want me to be used for Jesus. He doesn't want you to be used for Jesus. He wants to shut you down. He'll give you sicknesses. He'll break your car. He'll break your house. He'll make things go uneven in this world. But you know what? You keep fighting in the spirit. And you know what? Even if you don't have any money left, God will just keep help. God will, God will God provides what we need. It doesn't matter. If we have nothing in the bank, they have nothing. God provides what we need. You know, but people who don't trust in the Lord, they think that their names and their things are going in verse. <clears throat> Look at Revelation 21, 4, 7. Hold on. Revelation 21, 4, 7. Revelation 21, 4, 7. You know, give your time and money to God. You know, don't give it to that guy, Robert Tilden, sowing the yeah. seed. You know what? We sow the seed. You know how we sow the seed? By buying gospel tracts, Bibles, Read and getting the out there, handing them out to people. Yeah. That's how you're sowing seed. You're sowing the Word of God That's to right. people. You ain't sowing it to him to make, you know, money and, you know, uh, to, for his, uh, you know, whatever he does with it. If he's not using it for the Lord, then obviously, you know, he's not doing what God wants him to do. Um. Uh, you have to, uh, Revelation 21, 4 and 7 says, And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So you know what? God, you know what? I struggle. A lot of times I see friends, family, people who don't want to come. And man, it, man, it trouble. It hurts my heart, man. Brings tears to my eyes. I pray for these people. I'm like, man, I've been praying and praying. You know, but you know what? When we die and we go to heaven, God's going to wipe that. We won't remember, you know. And and then it says in verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Mm -hmm. You know what? If you over overcome, live your life. Live your life for God no matter what. It may th think, you know, you're handing out tracts. It doesn't seem like many people are getting saved. You know what? That's up to God. That's up to them to turn and, you know, ask for his forgiveness. I can't force anybody. I can't save anybody. Only get God can. And God says, come, repent. Turn to him. You know, they have to repent. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. So when, once you overcometh and trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you have all things. You'll have heaven. That's eternity. You'll be with God forever. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So God will call you son in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let's go back in our text. And it says in verse number 12. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beast that perish. So honor of men means nothing. You honor God. You know, we have to honor God. We have to give him 
the all the honor and glory. We can't honor men like, oh, he, you know, he's he's got money, so we got to honor him, or you know, maybe that money will rub off and come to us. You know, no, honor God. Let's look at Second Corinthians four eighteen. No, use your money for God. You know, buy Bibles, buy gospel tracts. Just use it for the glory of God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.18. While we look, not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. But you know what? The things we've seen, you know, like <clears throat> people have cars, they have houses, they have, you know, they have many things, but you know what? That's temporal. It's going to vanish. It's going to go away. But you know what? Our goal is to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ, to tell them about him, that they can turn and they can have, you know, life everlasting. It's eternal. It's forever, you know. And if I give somebody some money, you know, and I don't tell them about Jesus, they may eat some food and be, you know, filled for the moment. But if I don't tell them about Jesus Christ, you know, what are they going to do? Die and go to hell? You know, people in the wars, you're bringing supplies, it's good, but bring gospel tracts yeah. too. So when you give somebody something, you give them a dollar or two, give them a gospel tract. That's that's worth more than all the money in the world. You know, you know we can't honor people, we can only honor God. Uh, you know, there's no honor in, uh, when we're, once you honor people, you know, you're not honoring God. You know, we have to, you can, you know, people, you can, you don't glorify them, you can say, hey, this person, you know, he's doing the right thing. But especially if they're <coughs> glorify God. Look at 1 Timothy 6, 16 and 17. 1 Timothy 6, 16 and 17. First Timothy 6, 16 and 17. It says, who only has immortality? So only through God. God gets the glory. Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto. <clears throat> you know what? Whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. You give God the glory, you know. God gets the glory, and we come to God through His Son, Jesus Christ. It says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they, they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. You know, God gives us what we need. You know, people who think their money, uh, you know, is going to save them and that. You know, people, if you do, if, it says charge them. You know, you have to, to tell them about Jesus Christ. You know, their money's going to disappear. They're going to disappear. You know, they need the Lord Jesus Christ. Honor, only honor God. It says like beasts, so like the beasts, they're going to perish. Um, Ecclesiastes 3.18-22. Ecclesiastes 3, 18 to 22. Ecclesiastes 3, 18 to 22. It says, I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, so that's the status, the condition of the sons of men, that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the Son of Man befalleth beast, so they're going to die. And even one thing befalleth them as the, as, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they all have one breath. So God put the breath of life into God made all the animals. God put the breath of life into the humans, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all this is vanity. So you know what? His life is life. you got life, but then it says... All go into one place, all are of the dust, and turn to dust again. So when you die, you know, God pick you from the dust of the ground and breathe a living soul. And it says, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? You know what? You trust Jesus Christ, you're going to heaven. And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. So downwards towards hell, you know, up is towards heaven. Jesus and God are in the north. It says above the stars and the clouds in the north. And it says, Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Only Jesus Christ can, you know, when you die, you're going to see things that you never could even imagine. I mean, 
people, what do they want to do? They want to get back to the, you know, the Garden of Eden. They go to flower shows. They go by the lake. They go by, you know, secluded places. It gives you peace. It gives you that peace because you're getting back to God, the things that God made. And there's nothing better. Rejoice in your work. You know what? I rejoice. I work and I can serve God. Amen. God gives me the ability, the strength in that to do. So we got to rejoice in that. We have to serve God while we can, you know, because there may become a time when we won't be able to. I'll be too old or I may get injured or get sick and then I can't serve him, you know. The spirit of man's going upward. If you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to heaven. The beast is going downward to be separated from God to hell, the lake of fire. Uh, you know, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You're not going to perish. You're going to have everlasting life. You know, you know the danger is for the people who don't trust the Lord. They're going to perish. They're, you know, they're going to they're going to perish. <clears throat> And you're not going to you're not going to trust the Lord. They're going to be separated from. Then it says in verse thirteen of Psalm forty nine, <clears throat> this their way is their folly. So you know it's their foolishness, their folly, and their fo yet their prosper posterity approve their saying. Selah. You know if you follow man, you follow you know foolishness. You're going to die in your sins and go to hell. If you follow God, you open your ears, and you open your ears, and you listen to what God wants. You're going to Trust him. You're going to turn from your sin. You're going to turn to Jesus Christ. And as you know, if you're saved, you should be daily walking with the Lord and being witnesses for him. You know, if you walk away from that and start reliving in the flesh, God's it's foolishness. You know, and it says in verse 14, like sheep they are laid in the grave. You know, that death shall feed on them. You know, death's going to feed on. If you don't trust the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to be in eternity in hell and in the lake of fire. And the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling place. You know what? We're going to have beauty when we're with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the wicked shall be turned into hell, you know, and be sheep to the slaughter. Look at Psalm 9, 17 to 20. Psalm 9, 17 to 20. Psalm... 9 Psalm 9 17 to 20 says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot God you know what so the nation we got to pray for this nation the United States that we return to God you know because here it says the wicked shall be turned into hell the nations that forget God for the needy shall not be not always be forgotten the exception of the poor shall not perish forever but you know the needy you have to come Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. You know, let God prevail. Let Jesus prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but to men. You know what? We have to lift up Jesus Christ and let this nation know that we serve the God of kingdom, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's look at uh, Revelation 21.8. <clears throat> Revelation 21 8. And I'm gonna, it says, But the fearful and the unbelieving, so fearful, you're, fear, you're fearful to make a decision for God. Unbelieving. So, what do you got to do to die and go to hell or go to the lake of fire? Just don't believe. Yeah. Live your life. You think you're having fun, you have things in this world, but you know what? You don't have nothing because when you die, you're not going to have anything. Your things are going to be left behind and you will be uh, separated from God. And it says the abominable. So it puts you in with, you know, disgusting, vile, detestable people, you know, fearful and unbelieving and murderers. You're classified, if you don't trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you're classified for murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. These are wicked people, wicked things, idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I don't wish that upon nobody. Um, Everybody has free will. We have free will to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, let's look at Romans 8, 1 and 2. Romans 8, 1 and 2. I'm going to close with this. There is, there is therefore now no condemnation. 
you know what? Once you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be condemned to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. But you got to live in the spirit. You got to live in the spirit. You can't live in the flesh. You know what? Because you're saved. You know what? You got to live in the spirit daily. It's a struggle, but you got to. You can do it. With God, you can overcome because the Holy Spirit lives in you. You already overcame because Jesus overcame. So we have to live in the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So we're free from it. You know, and then you can be free too. Anybody can be free. You got to come, Jess. You got to come. Ask Jesus to save your soul. Repent of your sins. Turn to Jesus. He did the hard part, dying on the cross. He paid with his blood. God raised him from the dead. He's waiting. He wants to hear from you. That you, you, you repent and you turn to him. He wants to save your soul. And people who are saved, you know, live in the spirit. Don't live in the flesh. God doesn't want you in the flesh. You know, serve him. Yeah. And, and let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for for people, Lord. I pray for people's lost souls. I pray for people who are saved to live in the spirit, not in the flesh, that, you know, one day we'll be with you. And, you know, just, uh, I pray for these lost people in the world, Lord, that their money can't save them. You know, we, we, we have to get out there and tell them. We have to shine the light, your light, Lord, uh, through the Holy Spirit. Guide us to these people that we'd be able to be witnesses and show compassion to them. You know, so many people are caught up in all kinds of sins and troubles and they thank God that you for, you gave up on them. You've never given up till the person dies. They have that chance, Lord. Right. And we pray for all these different people who are sick now, that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. And I pray that uh, you'd use us to be that witness. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. All right, we're going to sing a song. I want to say Jimmy, Donovan, got to come back to church. We love you. We love you. You got to come back to church. You got to hear God's word. Curtis in Michigan with the dogs. You know, we're praying. You know, he's got three feet of snow up in Muskegon, Michigan. Who knows what the temperature is? It might be, uh, man, 10 below up there. Mary Ann in uh, Washington. Hi, she supports us here. She was here in Chicago. Now she's in a uh, small town up in upstate Washington State. And, uh, you know, praise God for her, and uh, may God bless you and uh, protect you and help you in this time of winter now. All right, we're going to sing page 389, Whiter Than Snow. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in thy soul. Break down every idol, cast out every foe. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down from thy throne in the skies and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I know. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, for this I must humbly entreat. I wait, blessed Lord, at thy crucified feet. By faith for my cleansing I see the blood flow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, thou seest me patiently wait. Come now and within me a new heart create. For those who have sought thee, thou never says no. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. 
Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. You know what? When Jesus cleanses you, you're whiter than snow. There's snow outside right now. You're stepping in muddy. It gets mucky. It ain't. God cleanses you. His blood cleanses you and makes you whiter than snow. That's right. Next week, we got a bunch of brothers from my uh, the men's Bible study, Brother Bob, Brother Schaller, Brother Mick, and Brother John McGovern. I think they're coming out. I told them tonight maybe too much because cold, but you know what? They're going to come next week, and we're going to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ all together. Uh, let me pray. Let me pray. Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray for uh, his people, Lord. I pray for uh, Jim Shaler's son, Matthew. I pray, pray you break the chains there from the devil, Lord, and deliver him, Lord. I pray that you you would just help that young man, Lord, that he would be saved and trust you as Lord and Savior, and you would protect him, Lord. I pray for baby Abraham, that you'd lift that baby up, Lord, now, Lord, that he, you would get the glory in the whole situation. Mm -hmm. and. Lord, I pray for your people that you protect them and watch over them and yeah. keep them safe and in your will and use them to glorify your name and to tell people about you, Lord. I pray that we can be used for you and bless this church here, bless the people here. Bless us, Lord, with uh, your holy hand of your righteousness yes. and that we can uh, be witnesses for you till you come, Lord. I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness, beautiful for situation, <coughs> the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side to the north, the city of the great King. And we're praying for Terrell Robinson, David Scogley, his knee. T.C. Pa, we saw, you know what, we pray that she comes back to church. <clears throat> Many people, Ron Frim, my friend with the missing leg. And uh, you know what, we prayed for, uh, in our prayer time, for Derek, uh, Esther, Miss Singh, uh, with their uh, pipes breaking. You know, a lot of people's pipes are breaking. Keep your cold water running. You know what, you don't want to have broken pipes. And, uh, you know, we pray for people to come Sunday to church. Amen? Yeah, amen. You know, if I can pick them up or you can come, come. Amen? amen. Help us here. Mission Independent Baptist Church, 3239 West Bremar, Chicago, Illinois, 60659. Come and serve the Lord and praise God with us together. Amen? amen. Have a good night. Be safe. Stay warm. And may God go with you. Amen? amen. Praise God.